All right, what is going on, everyone? Hope everyone had a great New Year, great Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. We are finally kicking off the New Year with uh, some new content. So, this year, uh, I made it one of my resolutions to go ahead and start my home lab setup. Now, um, this home lab setup is really going to be focused towards virtualization. I really want to get well versed in 2020 with Unix uh, operating systems, Linux, as well as familiarize myself with uh, Windows Server, uh, Active Directory, domain services, and things of that nature. So this is going to allow me to do all that. Uh, now, if you're out there and you're looking to build your first home lab, uh, this is kind of overkill in a sense, but for the price, you know, these things are like $120 on eBay. It's kind of like a no-brainer. So paid $130 for each of these. This is actually something that I had before. And... This is a $40 switch. So this is actually pretty inexpensive stuff. If you can get this stuff cheap enough, you know, I'd say go ahead and do it for sure. But yeah, these are two Dell R710s. These are going to be used for virtualization. These are actually set up already. Uh, this one is running Windows Server 2019. And this one is running ESXi version 6.7. But later on in the series, I will actually go in, um, show you how to set that up. So yeah, I have the Z420. This is my primary... Uh, backup file server. This actually handles the backups for my Mac Pro, which is in the back. This is my Windows Server 2019 setup. This actually is a file server as well, and this will be the domain controller as well as a DNS server for any virtual machines that are hosted on this machine, which is the ESXi version 6.7 uh, host. Now, this has a Xeon E5 1607, I think, version 1. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM. It's running Windows Server 2019 as well. Uh, this is a dual x5680 machine. It uh, has 32 gigs of RAM and uh, has three uh, 900 gigabyte uh, 10,000 RPM 2.5 inch drives. These are the small form factor version of the R710, which have, I think, eight drive bays on each one of these. So that's something to keep in mind. This is also a dual x5680 machine. 32 gigs of RAM. So these are actually identical. I got these on eBay. I think $130 a piece. Only thing is that these didn't come with memory. So that's something to keep in mind. Then you got the Cisco 2960 uh, gigabit switch. I'm sorry. This is a 48 port switch. Uh, each one of these is capable of a gigabit Ethernet connection, which is pretty nice. Uh, it has two, yeah, two SFP uh, for gigabit uplink and then console management and micro usb and full size usb you know you do like a usb firmware update or whatever you could do that on your switch so uh that's kind of the overview of the equipment now i can go ahead and show you guys the temporary network setup if i take you guys and so if i go over here this is a ethernet power line adapter this is just to run the um machine setup over here this is my Mac Pro, my Xbox. Uh, it's not the fastest in the world, but it does get the job done. Uh, it has a stable ping of like around 30 over the power line adapter, so that's all that really matters. Uh, download speed, again, isn't the greatest. It's around 30 megabytes a second uh, down, so it's not bad, but it's not, you know, the best, considering Wi-Fi is around 24, 25, so it's a little bit better, but, you know, it is what it is. The main reason I have this is just to get a stable connection because up here the wireless signal is very weak and uh, I don't really want to bother with range extenders. So like I said, this is pretty temporary. Um, this is the router up here. Uh, it's still getting the internet from uh, the downstairs router. This is actually on a different, I guess, a subnet. Uh, the downstairs internet, everybody else is on like 192, 168, whatever. This is actually, uh, <clears throat> this is actually the DHCP server in a sort and it's actually handing out uh 10.0 whatever addresses and uh like i said i did pre-configure some of this stuff so uh this actually has static ips already because of the management on the r710s had to configure that as well as the um ip address for the link aggregate on the back of the file server and then the one uh Nick here. Let's see what else? What else? What else? So yeah, like I said, um, internet handing out uh, ten dot zero dot whatever addresses. It's the default uh, class C subnet. So 
uh, goes in here, goes to this switch, which feeds off uh, internet to my Mac Pro, Xbox, whatever. And then that, out of the switch, out of the blue switch, I'm sorry, the blue cable, out of this switch, runs underneath the bed, all the way over here, which is where the initial configuration took place in this little area right here. And then that's where that blue cable terminates to the switch. So, that's kind of a general idea of what's going on with that. Um, I do want to upgrade to 10 gig eventually. Uh, put this back on the tripod for a second. I don't think I really missed anything. Um, I do want to upgrade to 10 gigabit uh, networking and all that stuff in the future. But for right now, let's just do what I want to do. I'm going to set up SSD caching and stuff like that when I get my uh, actual... Uh, network attached storage server. This is going to be replaced by a R210 2 Dell uh, 1U server that's going to have uh, um, four 2 terabyte drives in it, and that's going to be my archive backup server for Time Machine backups and any other information on the Mac Pro. And <clears throat> I'm also going to be doing a PFSense box to have everything completely isolated from the network. Uh, because right now on these devices, so these cannot connect to the internet. But, yeah. And that's going to be talking. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the rack. Here is the rack. It's over here. I've already assembled it. I can actually insert a time lapse of me assembling it. If you guys want to watch that. Probably not. I might not put that in the video. But, as you can see, I assembled this yesterday. Um, this is a 15U. I think, yeah, 15, 15U. Uh, Amazon cheapo rack. Uh, I was gonna get like a nice StarTech 20 something new, but uh, I just was like, you know, trying to keep it on a budget. So, this is that rack. It was pretty weird to assemble. It didn't really have any instructions, so I had to wing it on that one. But yeah, it's got a. I put in one of my shelves that I showed you guys. I'm not sure if I showed you already yet, but I got some shelves. A 1U uh, wire brush panel for a cable management. I guess one rack for a server. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind if you do, I'll link the rack in the description, but one thing to keep in mind if you do want to buy this rack, these actually have, this will focus, these have round holes, and a lot of this equipment has square holes, or ovular holes, whatever you want to call them. So, that's something to keep in mind. It's not a huge deal. I've already test mounted uh, one R710 in this, and it actually fits Holds it just fine. Uh, put a lot of weight down on it. It holds just fine. So, let me go ahead and get up. I kind of went over the network setup, what this is going to be used for. Uh, I guess I can go ahead and start putting stuff in the rack now. I'm going to go ahead and pull all that stuff out. I might go ahead and do a time lapse of that. And yeah. <laughs> All right, now that everything's out, we can go ahead and start moving the rack in. Uh, the only thing that we really need to do is hook, hook back in the, uh, let's see here, where'd it go? Hook back in the storage protector. Now, yes, this is very temporary, uh, like a lot of the stuff in the setup. Well, like I said, this is temporary. Um, we're not gonna be using this for a whole lot a time. Um, I do want to get a UPS. I am going to buy a UPS. I just, uh, I'm still doing my research right now. And this is not going to be a, uh, <laughs> a really good solution. We're going to be buying a UPS. We're going to be buying a, a couple of PDUs and uh, we'll get those racked up. And yeah, but for right now, this is just kind of just a mock-up of what's going on. Go ahead and mock everything up in the rack. And then when everything comes in, we will make the final configuration. But for right now, we're doing the Kind of like the test fit. So let's go ahead and plug this back in and move the rack over. All right, now that we got the rack moved over to the corner, we can go ahead and start putting stuff in. 
right. So I'm gonna start the switch. The switch is going on the very top anyway. Next up is the R710. I'm gonna go on that shelf right beneath the wire brush. Okay. All right, that one's in. Now I'm gonna to try to mount the the HPZ 420 in one of the racks. You know what? Screw it. Why not? Let's go ahead and try to mount one of the R710s in one of these. Why not? Right? Now we should be able to try it out. <laughs> I've been mounting it wrong like eight times. Jeez. All right, let's see if it works. And before I do this, please, this is not meant for racking like full size servers. This is one of those things, do as I say, not as I do. If you're starting a home lab, please do not try to put your server on this. This is temporary. I have another rack coming in tomorrow. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. This is just a test. All right. It works. <laughs> I don't see any huge sound of flexing or anything like that. So, yeah. It works. So... All right, let's move on to the uh, Z420. All right, now that we've got the second R710 in, uh, the camera, I guess it filled up or whatever, but I got the third rack in there. So I'm gonna try to attempt, and I'm going to attempt to mount the Z420. Not quite. Still gotta go one more down. All right, so try on there, right? That should be plenty of space. Hopefully. Not quite. Guess I'm gonna have to move to the bottom. All right, so here's the status of the rack as right now. Uh, I'm actually at a stopping point for today. Uh, I cannot fit the Z420 file server in there right now because of this uh, piece right here. It's just too tall. I'm sorry, it's just too deep, I guess. I don't know. It won't fit in there because it hits this. So I'm just going to wait for my other racks to come in. Uh, they come in first thing tomorrow. Uh, when I get back from class, I will pick this up. For you, it'll be like a second, but yep. Just letting you know where I'm stopping off for today. Uh, I might go ahead and try to wire some of this stuff up just to uh, get it out of the way. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and start wiring some of this stuff up. Alright, so I'm not really sure where I left off last time. Um, I finally got some free time tonight to work on this a little bit. So, uh, I think I left off last time. Let me go ahead and take this off the tripod. Left off last time where we had just got everything together inside the rack. Um, I did go ahead and start wiring some stuff up. So we got the um first server 
on the ID rack. And we've got the uh, two power cables and then another two power cables. And then the temporary battery thing down there. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull out the second Dell R710 and uh, go ahead and unbox this rack so we can get this arranged properly in the rack. So, go ahead and put this back up here. Move that in the frame so you can kind of see that there. Kind of talk kind of quiet. It's late at night. Let's see if I can get some scissors. And this is just one of those uh, cheap Amazon uh, rack mount things. I think the company that makes these is called Nav Point or Nave Point, something like that. Kinda. And then here's all your stuff that you get. With that, got your two big rails, and then you've got the smaller rails that go on the back of the rack, and then you've got, of course, your mounting hardware. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the second R710 out. heavy. Alright, and uh, obviously the reason for removing that is so we can get a proper um, mounting of all three servers, mainly the two R710s and then the Z420 at the bottom. So, I'm going to get my drill and go ahead and undo this shelf, which was never meant to hold a full-size server anyway. Okay, that's out of the way. Now we can go ahead and install the new rack. I guess new mount, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they do give you hardware. Pretty sure I already showed you that. But we're going to be using the hardware that came with the rack since this is a uh, round hole rack and not a square hole. So, go ahead and take the initial two racks up the bag. And uh, get these mounted up kind of in the same position that the other one was mounted in, the other shelf. Uh, let's see here. I think it was on number eight, All right? Something like that. You can always play around with it. So, you got the bolts. Now we've got the first two points mounted in. And I think this should give us enough room between servers. So now we can go ahead and move on to installing the second part, which is the back half of the rack mount which I can go ahead and move it over here you can kind of make out um, how it's set up in the back over here 
And no, we do have to use the mounting hardware that they provide for uh, this back half portion. And I think it was the, uh, let's see here, the longer screws that they provide, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's these. Yeah, it's these long screws right here. So, go ahead and toss these in. But first, we're going to have to use uh, some of the pre-existing mounting hardware for the back half to mount on the back half of the rack. So, down here, I've got my specialty hardware that came with the rack for the round hole uh, mounting. All right, got four of those. Go ahead and move to the back of this and start putting them in. nice and finger tight and I'll move over to the other side and I don't know if I've already mentioned it before but these just provide extra stability for the servers because these are pretty heavy and I'll move this over a little bit and I'm just going to disconnect my internet input from the switch alright come right here So many wires and cables. All right. Now I can get the drill and start snugging this stuff up. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but. It looks bad on camera, but it's fine. It'll straighten out once we get some bolts in there. tiny miniature screws here that go into the side of the rack playing guessing games here yep and it sure is these little buddies go in here you secure the rack they only give you eight of these this is all you really should be good to go for the most part pretty sturdy a little it looks a little bad but it's fine um some more are all the way snugged on so now in theory we should be able to push this back a little bit and check my angle and should be able now to reinstall the R710 properly instead of having it resting it having it rest on a oh this is heavy on a incorrect shelf so this thing should just be able to slide in right in place fine and yeah, it looks pretty good it's a little space between the servers but uh, I think it should be just fine uh, I don't really have, need to have them exactly next to each other so check the angle here 
So now we can properly mount the uh, Z420 in its shelf. So I'll go ahead and clear all this crap out. And this is literally just all cables for the, R or for the uh, Z420. So I can go ahead and uh, take this out. Actually, hmm. how do I want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to take it out for right now. All right, shelves in. Oh, let me make sure this thing's still going. All right. All right, now we should be able to wire this up and make sure everything works. So. Let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna put it facing this way. And just right in. Just like that, perfect. Just as it was meant to be. All right, so now that that's in, should be good to wire everything up. I don't think you're missing anything, really. Uh, hmm. Yep, yeah, I'm going to leave it just like that. Alright, now that we've got everything uh, in the rack properly, I'm going to go ahead and start by running some Ethernet cables down to the Z420. We're actually going to be running a total of four because we do have a link aggregate configured on the secondary NIC on the Z420. So, I'll go ahead and start by removing these. I'm actually going to remove one. And then one we're going to move over here. This is just for my, um, just an extra. Actually, you know what? We don't even need it. We don't need it right now. These are short. Uh, these will not reach to the uh, Z420. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the first one right here. And then the second one. And then finally the fourth. I'm going to go ahead and just run these to the back of the rack. So, I've got everything ran. We'll go ahead and move over to the back here. Alright, so now you can see we are behind the rack. <laughs> and as you can see, there's a lot of cables everywhere. Um, there's no cable management just yet. Before you guys, you know, absolutely destroy me in the comments. <laughs> it's coming, I'm getting proper cable management equipment and all that stuff. So, for right now, let's do, just to get it working. So, I'm going to go ahead and get some zip ties and... Uh, Wire this up and then run these cables back down to the Z420.
Not sure how well you guys saw that. But I did go ahead and run this uh, four cables to the Z420. And I'll actually go ahead and plug the other um, server in, the other R710 that's down here. And no, it's not secured with any screws as of just yet because this is still a pretty temporary setup. I'm still uh, trying to get a couple more 1U servers in here, like a couple of Dell R210 twos and uh, maybe another router but we'll see um, but for right now I am going to go ahead and finish running these cables uh, like this USB keyboard and mouse down to the R uh, down to the Z420 because that's really what this is for since we can uh, remotely control the Dell R710s via the uh, IDRAC6 Enterprise so I'll go ahead and finish that and come back to you when I have an update all right, everyone, we are currently wired up. So I think I've got everything here. I've got the DVI cable in the back of the monitor. Like I said before, uh, this is only for the Z420 since it's not able to be managed over the uh, web interface. So I've got it hardwired in case it goes down or something like that since it is the main file server for my backups. That DVI, the four, uh, Gigabit connections, which is a total of 400 or 4 gigabit. You've got the come back here, got the console cable, uh, USB to console, so we can uh, uh, Cisco 2960. Then you got the keyboard and mouse, and then power. And we've got powered everything else, so we should, in theory, be good to go to push this thing back. Let me go ahead and get a look at it from the front. As you can see, everything is nice and neat for the most part. And you can kind of see back there the nastiness, which we will eventually take care of. But yeah, I think we'll go ahead. We're good to go ahead and push this thing back and give it a boot and see if everything recognizes on the network, and we should be good to go. All right, so we finally got everything connected. We've got both uh, Dell R710s connected to power and connected to the internet. Well, the switch. And then we've got the Z420 connected, and uh, let's go ahead and see if it all starts up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug the internet back in to the switch here. And then I'm also going to boot this R710 back up. Getting a display on the monitor here. And we've also got lights on the switch. It's just going through the uh, SAS control right now. <laughs> All right, so it just says uh, the memory fan is not detected, so I'll go ahead and press. Uh, of course, the keyboard doesn't work. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, guys, so my Apple keyboard took a dump, so I have to use my Logitech G910 to boot this thing. So we're going to go ahead and get into there. And it boots nice and quick since it's off a SSD on a SATA 3 6 gigabyte per second bus. So I'll go ahead and log in under the admin. And I'll reach my mouse. Alright, so it looks like we have an IP address of 10.0.0.15. So that verifies that we are good to go. And I can go ahead and let's see here. Take off the tripod. Show you the setup what we got going on here. And yeah. So we got everything situated. We've got the first Dell R710 here. Uh, let's see. 
It's got an IP. This has got an IP. And this has got an IP. So, looks like we are good to go. That wraps up this part of the video, guys. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Um, we've got everything set up in this part of the series. We've got the servers mounted and the Z420 up and running. Uh, and the next part, I'll go over the configuration of the network and stuff like that. And then uh, running VMs and all this stuff. But, yep, yeah, that's it for right now. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.